picked up an all graded collection of comic books and I paid over $10,000. Stay tuned. Bryce Comics. Before we jump into today's show, I wanted to remind you that on Tuesday, February 8th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, pre-sales go live for my newest exclusive from Johnny Desjardins, We Live Age of the Palladians number one white and We Live Age of the Palladians number one black. Um, it's the same story told from two different perspectives. They're both issue number ones, confirmed first appearances of characters that will be important to the storyline according to the publishers themselves, but not to mention just this incredibly epic art from Johnny Des Jardins in his palette knife art style. Um, there's going to be raw virgin sets. There's going to be blue label CGC sets. There's going to be gold label CGC sets. There's going to be metal sets and there's going to be signed metal sets limited to 300 of the virgins and 100 of the metals. Also, I'm going to have the entire first run, issues one through five of the first series at cover price at BriceComics.com dropping at the same time so you guys can get caught up on the first series. If you haven't read it, it's incredible. I highly recommend it. I would be really surprised if this series didn't get optioned. It's already got so much love and so much heat on it, and there's been no actual confirmations of anything getting optioned. So it's like, you know, of some of the stuff that gets optioned, it's like, why wouldn't a production studio want to take a stab at this story? I mean, it is incredible, incredible artwork and incredible story, truly novel, like all the way around. So I'm incredibly excited for that. Thank you so much for considering to pick it up and enjoy today's show. First of all, congratulations to this person. You are the winner of the January YouTube giveaway of Amazing Spider-Man number one. And congratulations to this person. You are the winner of the January newsletter giveaway for Bryce Comics for A-Force number one. And if you're new here, we do a giveaway on the channel and on the website, at least one giveaway every single month. And this month, the YouTube giveaway is Amazing Spider-Man number 289 in the CGC 9.4 white pages. Ned Leeds is revealed to be Hobgoblin and the first appearance of a new Hobgoblin in Jack-O-Lantern actually came out of this collection that you're going to see here today. And the newsletter giveaway is Amazing Spider-Man 362 in a CGC 9.6 with white pages. Just an awesome early Carnage and Venom cover. Subscribe to the newsletter at BriceComics.com and you're entered to win this. And today in celebration of the video, we're going to do a discount code. Use code FLASH10 for 10% off everything in stock at BriceComics.com. And most of these books here will be listed. So I want to start and give you the rundown of how the negotiations went for this collection because I've always been really interested in that before I actually became a YouTuber and, and a retailer is how do these deals go down for collections. And uh, this one is a little bit different because it's all graded comics and that makes pricing it an absolute breeze. I mean, it's, it's so much easier to find the actual value of a comic book. Sometimes there is still a little bit of research and stuff that goes into it, but when they're graded, it makes like a whole lot easier. So the seller reached out to me and said, hey, here's this list of comics that I'm looking to sell. And I responded and said, I can do 70% of FMV for graded comics. And he said, that sounds great. Let's do it. What, what do we do next? And I had just a little bit of hesitation at that point because just recently a similar situation arose where somebody reached out to me, sent me their list of books, all graded comics, all great keys. And they said, you know, what can you offer? And I said, I can do 70% of FMV. He said, great. I spent two hours looking up all the books. I said, okay, here's the total. And he said, whoa, I can't sell them for that cheap. And I said, what What was the miscommunication here? I told you I could do 70% of the recent sales on eBay. That's exactly what this price is. And he goes, yeah, but I have more into these books than that. And I go, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know how much you paid for these books. Like I just told you the price I could pay, which was 70% of recent eBay sales. So I, needless to say, it was very frustrating to spend all of that time just for a just a complete waste of time. So this was a very similar situation, actually a similar value of the of the books. And um, so I said, all right, well, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I can do 70% of recent sales. Let's take the first book on your list. That's Amazing Spider-Man 252, 9.8. And um, the recent sale on eBay was this. 70% of that was this. And he said, well, let's actually, let's take that one out. And I go, okay, here we go. You know, like the first book on the list. And he's not cool with the price that he said he was cool with. Um, but then it just turns out he said that was one of the bigger books in the batch. And he said that he just 
needed, you know, some funds right away and he was going to have to sell that, you know, some, some other way to, to get those funds. And it turned out that he was absolutely correct. I was super hesitant to look up all the books, but he had full intentions of sending all of the books the whole time, which, um, he did, uh, shortly thereafter. And so what we did on this one is we used my FedEx account. This seller was located in Canada. And as you know, you know, international shipping can be very expensive, especially for this is like over 70 slabs. So shipping 70 slabs from Canada to the US can be super pricey. But I have a new FedEx account that has been offering really good rates. And so I said, we can just use my FedEx account. And, um, you know, I'll just take the cost of the shipping out of whatever the total is of your books, because I can't really pay for shipping and still offer the 70% of fair market value price because the shipping doesn't have any impact on what I can sell the books for, if that makes sense. Like if you were local and you walked in, of course, there's no shipping. Everything's a lot easier. But if, if you're not local, I still don't want to have to pay for shipping because it's, it, you know, it's not going to change what I charge for the books. It's, it's basically, it's just a, a cost that, that falls on the seller. Um, and so we went that route. So it's a great way to, you know, if you have a large collection of CGC comic books, you just want to get rid of them all in one shot. You don't want to have to list them all individually. You don't want to deal with pictures and shipping and eBay and all of that junk. Um, you know, you can send them all to me, even use my FedEx account. So there's no upfront cost whatsoever. And I sent payment the same day, over $10,000. Boom. Just, uh, in his account the same day that I received him. I think it's a really valuable resource in the comic community. Obviously, it's not going to work for everyone, but for some people, it will make sense. So let's jump into all of these books. All right, so we're going to start it off here with the Amazing Spider-Man run. Um, some awesome ASM books in here. So here's ASM 256, 9.2 white pages, the first appearance of Puma. ASM 265, the first appearance of Silver Sable in 8.0 white pages. Amazing Spider-Man 287 in a 9.6 white pages. Um, just an awesome Daredevil cover. Amazing Spider-Man 289, Ned Leeds is revealed as Hobgoblin and the first appearance of a new Hobgoblin in Jack-O-Lantern, 9.6 white pages. Also a 9.4 white pages. Amazing Spider-Man 298 in a 9.6 with white pages. The first Todd McFarlane arts on Spider-Man and the first appearance of Eddie Brock in Cameo. There's also a 9.4 of that book and a 9.2 and also a 7.0. So I'm not sure what the situation was on this. Like, um, did he pick these up at different times when he found them at a good price? Did he um, submit them all together? I'm not, I'm not really sure what the, the angle was on that. Um, and then we have Amazing Spider-Man 299 in a 9.8 white pages and then also why not another 2.99 in a 9.4 white pages never complain about too many of these books uh 2.99 white pages and then here's one of the biggest books in the batch asm 301 in a 9.8 white pages this book is incredibly difficult to get in a 9.8 and uh it's it just cracks me up actually that this is asm 301 it's the first book after amazing spider-man 300 and they cover swiped asm 300 i mean asm 300 is one of the most cover swiped comics of all time and they only made it one issue before they had to cover swipe it um that just cracks me up as to why it's more difficult to get in high grade i'm not really sure i mean asm 300 also has a black cover this one has a black cover that shows a lot of spine ticks along the spine but um, I'm not sure why it's so much more difficult than ASM 300 to get a 9.8 because if you look at the difference between 9.8s and 9.6s for ASM 300, the percentage is about 30%. So about if you look at the numbers between 9.8 and 9.6 of ASM 300, about 30% of them are 9.8s. But if you look at the numbers between 9.8s and 9.6s of this book, ASM 301, about 18% of them are 9.8s. So for some reason in those higher grades, it's just more difficult for this one to get the actual 9.8. And it's a very expensive book because of that. Um, we also have a 9.6 and so this is actually represents a really good opportunity because 9.6 is like I think it's like a $275 book whereas the 9.8 is like a $2,500 book so it's almost a 10x markup and I'm just going off of memory on those numbers don't hold me to that but um, 
it's about a 10x markup between the 9.6 and the 9.8 for this book, so it could be a good CPR candidate, but just keep in mind that the spine ticks along this all black cover are really unforgiving in this book. So, um, but if you can find one that's a good candidate, it's a definitely a good markup. And we also have a 9.4. And then ASM 3.16 and 9.8 white pages. I'm gonna be really tempted to keep this one and hold it onto this one, but I'm not sure that I will. Um, here's 344 in the 9.8 white pages, first appearance of Cletus Cassidy, and the first full appearance of Cardiac. And here's uh, ASM 345, just an awesome, awesome cover with Boomerang there and Venom up here saying, miss me. Also a 9.4 white pages in that book. And here's ASM 361, 9.8 white pages, first full appearance of Carnage. And 362 in a 9.8 white pages. Two 9.8s for 362. I feel like if you're gonna have ASM 361, you have to have 362 and 363. I mean, it's just, it's the trio, the same with ASM 300 and 280, 298, 299. It's just, these books just go together. Um, so here's 363 and a 9.8 white pages and a 9.6 of that book and a 9.0. ASM 400 and this is the die cut gray cover so you can see that the cover here is kind of gray and you there's actually something embossed on it it's really hard to see but it's like a gravestone and we'll see what it says here in just a sec because the, this is the gray version the die cut cover which uh, be on the lookout for a newsstand edition. It just doesn't say direct edition, but it's on the back, so it's kind of a sneaky one, but that is definitely a hard to find book in newsstand. This is the white version of ASM 400 embossed, and it's one of 10,000. And you can kind of see the, the imprint there a little bit better. It says a death in the family, and it's got Spider-Man on the gravestone. And there's the, the regular edition for ASM 400. So it's a 9.4 and a 9.6 of the regular edition. Amazing Spider-Man 410, just this awesome, awesome cover. It goes really well with ASM 431, the Cosmic Carnage, and an 8.0 and a 9.6. And then we have Amazing Spider-Man number 508. This is the Death of Ezekiel and an awesome cover. And here we have Amazing Spider-Man 569. It's qualified at Green Label because uh, it was signed by John Romita Jr., but it wasn't witnessed by CGC. So when that happens, they say name written on cover in marker <laughs> instead of saying that it's signed. And uh, this is uh, where Eddie Brock becomes anti-venom. There's a 9.2, um, just not signed. And one of the big books in the collection is this one, Amazing Spider-Man 569, the second print in a 9.8 white pages. Uh, really hard to find book, especially in a 9.8. And then we have Amazing Spider-Man 700. This is the 50th anniversary variant cover in a 9.8. And the regular cover A um, for ASM 700, which is this awesome collage by Mr. Garcin, just a really, really cool collage. And it also had a 9.0 version and a 9.0 of ASM 700, the Koipel variant. Okay, continuing with the Spider-Man theme, but outside of the Amazing Spider-Man run, um, we have Spider-Man 42, and this is an Iron Fist appearance. There you see him right there, just a cool cover. And a lot of these covers uh, in this stack here are books you don't see too often that are, are really awesome books. Uh, Spider-Man 2099, number 40. Um, it says Goblin 2099. I wonder if it's the first appearance of Goblin 2099. I'll have to check and look into that. Spider-Man Unlimited, number one, the first appearance of Shriek and Maximum Carnage storyline begins. And we have a 9.8 white pages, two copies in 9.8, and one copy in a 9.2. The 9.2 is a newsstand. Spider-Man Unlimited number two, uh, which is this awesome Venom and Carnage cover. Um, and we have a 9.4 and a 9.8 of that. Web of Spider-Man number 18. I've always loved this cover um, in a 9.0 white pages. 
Spider-Man 2099 number 10 in 96 white pages and number 26 in an 8.0 so not huge dollar books here by any means but you know everything has a value even if it's less than thirty dollars so spider-man 2099 number 37 in a 9.0 white spider-man 2099 number 38 in a 9.6 so this is an interesting book spider-man 2099 meets spider-man no number it's a one shot it's a 9.6 white pages it has a 5.95 cover price which is kind of not very common for a book from 1995 um so interesting one there i'm gonna have to look more into that spider-man 2099 special number one in a 9.8 now these next books here really sent me down a rabbit hole of thinking about my collecting goals and thinking about keeping some of these books i sold almost all of my black suit spidey stuff to fund the start of my business so no regrets whatsoever i mean i use those funds to start my business and you could never look back and regret something like that um, if it did your life um, something positive but i did always miss those books and i had them all newsstands as well i have a uh, marvel team up 141 in a 9.8 newsstand still um, but i had this in a, in a 9.8 newsstand I had 252 and I even had ASM 300 but it was a 9.6 newsstand so I'm really starting to think like do I want to collect all the black suit Spidey stuff again and um, I'm not sure because I've always been a fan I've always been a fan of the backstory about the black suit Spidey because in this book right here Marvel age number 12 um, is the first appearance of the concept art of Black Suit Spidey. So Black Suit Spidey was originally drawn by a Spider-Man fan named Randy. And Randy responded to a contest that Marvel was having saying, you know, draw something or a storyline for, for Spider-Man. He actually won the contest and uh, Jim Shooter reached out to him and said, I'd like to buy this concept from you for $220. And originally it was this black suit here, but the Spider-Man emblem was red. And so that concept art shows up here first in this issue before it shows up anywhere else. This predates Amazing Spider-Man 252. So I think this book is undervalued and incredibly significant to the history of the black suit. It's also more rare. Everything about it is interesting. So this cover, I don't know if you recognize it, is the exact same cover as Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number one. They cover swiped it, but this is the cover that came out first. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it's identical. Everything about the cover is identical to that book. So I think that's super interesting. It, Randy's story is just super interesting. You know, Randy was actually offered a spot to write the story arc for, a, for the Black Suit Spidey, and they went back and forth. But obviously this guy's just a fan. He's not a writer, and they never could make it come to fruition. And Randy just wanted a shout out. You know, he just wanted a shout out in one of the Marvel comic books saying that Randy was the guy who came up with the idea. Well, I'm giving you your shout out here, Randy. Shout out to you for the black suit, Spidey. Everything that you did for this run, I mean, it had a huge impact on the Spider-Man mythos, and I, for one, am a huge fan. Also, let's take it a step further. If you ever wanna come on the show and we can do an interview and just talk about that whole thing and how that all went down, I would love to do that, and I'm probably even gonna to try to hunt you down myself, Randy. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this book. Then we have Spider-Man Special Edition number one. And this is an interesting book because um, you can only get it if it was ordered through mail with a donation of $5 or more to UNICEF. And it has an embossed cover, a uh, really awesome embossed cover there. Uh, just an interesting book, not a re regular distribution model. I think that's a cool one. And Spawn 174, the first appearance of Gunslinger Spawn. So I was funny thing was also in the collection was Gunslinger Spawn number one, the one in 250 signed by Todd McFarlane, signed a number of that new release. And it's a raw copy with the COA in perfect condition. And I, I sent him an email and said like, was this just a freebie? Did you just throw in this extra book? And he said, no, I, I can't afford to give you a freebie even if I wanted to, you're, you're gonna have to pay for that one as well. But it wasn't in the list that he sent me. It was the one raw book and it's just kind of funny. I thought maybe he was just throwing in a freebie, but I went ahead and bought it as well probably offer them as a set and here's venom number three the first full appearance of Noel. and i'm definitely going to keep this one as well as a spec i'm actually buying these whenever i find them in a good price 
there you have it guys the ins and outs of buying a graded collection after tallying everything up i believe the fair market value for this collection at full market value is around fifteen thousand dollars and of course you know i'm only going to make thirty percent of that minus whatever um you know discounts i'm offering any selling fees that i have i have a little bit of overhead now i have a full-time employee who's going to you know take pictures and list and pack and ship and all of that takes time and time takes money so by all means, I am not going to retire off of this collection or anything like this. Um, I'm not getting rich off of the situation, especially with my margins. But at the end of the day, I love doing this. And I love getting a collection in like this, where even if I just keep that one book, that Marvel Tales number 12, and that's what I make, plus I get to hire an employee and have a little bit of profit on the side from all the sales, you know, I, I, can't, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I'm incredibly grateful to be in a position that I'm in now to where this kind of opportunity even comes to me. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's supported me thus far. Thank you for considering to support the channel by purchasing some of these books. And if you have a collection that you'd like to sell, um, don't hesitate to reach out. And as always, thank you for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and like this video. And you're entered to win that Amazing Spider-Man book. Sign up for the newsletter at BryceComics.com. And you're entered to win another Amazing Spider-Man uh, book this month. I appreciate you all, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.